I guess the question is, is where do I begin and how do I begin this video here? Uh, I'm speaking more so uh, to the leaders of our country, Israel, uh, to, the, to Benjamin Netanyahu, the Prime Minister, Shimon Perez more in particular, uh, for starting some of the situation that our country has gotten into, to the religious leaders as well, such as Rabbi uh, Yonah Metzger, also um, the founder of the Temple Mount, uh, or the, excuse me, the Temple Institute, uh, which is Rabbi uh, Yisrael Ariel, and um, of course, I would like to also include my dear brother Gershon Solomon of the Temple uh, Faithful and uh, Faithful uh, Temple Mount Temple Mount and Faithful Institute, um, who I do not believe is a part of this, but I, I I bring him up because I believe that he's more faithful to what Hashem would have us to know and do in the days that we're now living in. Uh, I, I want to re again bring to your attention. Uh, to the rabbinical community, um, Rabbi, rabbis uh, Winston as well, uh, which I know he's not a part of this as far as I know of, uh, Rabbi Mitzrachi out of New York, because you have influence with some of these other rabbis as well yourself, and uh, especially to our leaders back home that make the decisions that happen in Israel. Uh, I'm going to read to you directly from the book of Ezra again, because what we find in chapter 9 is a repeat of history that we're watching unfold. As we see, the United Nations uh, voted unanimously to give uh, the Palestinians a state. And, of course, there's a lot of the politicians saying, well, we're not going to do it. Uh, you know, this is not the way we're going to do it. You have to come to the peace process. I'm going to say some things here that need to be said to our, to our people here. Let's read from, from, um, from the Tanakh. Uh, it says, when these things were done, this is Ezra speaking, uh, he, writing here in the book of Ezra, chapter 9. Uh, it says, when these things were done, the leaders came to me saying, the people of Israel and the priests and the Levites have not separated themselves from the peoples of the lands with respects to the abominations of the Canaanites, the Hittites, the Perizzites, the Jebusites, the Ammonites, the Moabites, the Egyptians, uh, and the Amorites, for they have taken some of their daughters as wives for themselves and their sons, so that the holy seed is mixed with the peoples of those lands. Indeed, the hand of the leaders and rulers has been foremost in this trespass. So when I heard this thing, I tore my garment and my robe and plucked out some of the hair of my head and beard, and sat down astonished. And that's Ezra speaking there. Now, when I say it's history repeating itself, my brothers, we find in the story of Ezra here, as you read down, the leaders, the, the Levites, and the leaders of Israel, they recognized their sin, and they were willing to come and confess their sins. And we find, without going and reading each one of the, uh, the, the different passages throughout the book, so I'm going to take and just kind of refresh your memory, paraphrasing, but we find that what happens with Israel in the book of Daniel, that there is a covenant made, and it's going to be made with the prince that shall come, who is of the people who destroyed the temple and the sanctuary, which I've said many times is Rome. Now, there's many of you that, uh, that may look at this and say, well, the Vatican is not going to make a covenant with Israel. That is not true. You can get and look up, there are many news articles recently, as here in 2012, where the Arab League has asked the Vatican not to sign a league with Israel because it would be in violation of, the, of, the internet, of an international uh, a, a treaty there, that they should not do it. But the Vatican is pushing for it because of wanting control of certain properties, holy sites as they call it, in Israel, and wanting to gain more control of that region themselves. Now, I reported in, in time past how that in uh, 2010, actually in 2009, I believe is when it actually took place, is when the Vatican and the Arab League signed a, a, a uh, excuse me, the Arab, uh, yeah, they, they signed a treaty amongst themselves to foster more peace in the region. 
And so the Vatican and the Arab League are, are very intertwined together. They work together. And, and ironically, just to show you how much the Vatican is against the Jewish people, and yet our own nation is in the process of working on a, a, a deal with the Vatican right now, just as they did with the Arab League, let me just share with you what one of the officials of the Vatican had to say about Israel during the Gaza um, uh, confrontation. Now, Hamas has launched more than 1,000 rockets at Israel, and there were Israelis that were killed. Now, granted, more Palestinians were killed in the process of this, but the Vatican official here says nothing about what Hamas does, but he actually says here, and it's, it's in, this is in the, uh, the Palestine-Israel, uh, the title of it is the Palestine-Israeli Conflict, um, it's, this was posted on December 1st, 2012, and it says, Vatican, Israel, a baby killer, not a word about Hamas rockets. This is by uh, Giulio Miotti. Cardinal uh, Gifranco Ravasi, I may not pronounce the name right, president of the Vatican Council of Culture, commenting on the war between Israel and Hamas, delivered a severe attack on the Jewish people. I think of the massacre of the innocents. Children are dying in Gaza, their mothers shouting in a uh, uh, perennial cry, a universal cry. The Catholic Church high official equated Israel's operation in Gaza against the Hamas terror group with the New Testament story of Herod's slaughter of Jewish babies in the effort to kill Jesus. Now imagine, imagine that, the Vatican taking that aside. Now, I say that to my Israeli brethren and my rabbinical brethren as well and our leaders of Israel because of the covenant that you're working on now with the Vatican. And, and you're going to do it because just like in the story of Ezra, the leaders, both religious and political leaders, were the chief ones in marrying into the other nations. And of course, you've also not just going to marry the Vatican, but you've got to marry in with the different Arab League uh, agreements in order for that to happen. Now, many of you might think, well, no, this can't be. The Vatican and Israel, they're not going to make a covenant. This is going to be done with some Muslims. It is dealing with the Arab people. The Muslim people are going to be a tremendous impact on this. You have to understand that. it doesn't take away from that equation, but the wealth of the world lies in the Vatican. Now, uh, the chief rabbi, one of the chief rabbis of Israel, the Ashkenazi chief rabbi of Israel, is uh, Yona uh, uh, Metzger is the chief rabbi of Israel. How many times do you think he's already met with the Pope? Just take and Google images if you want. He is the chief rabbi of Israel for the Ashkenazi uh, Jews, and he has met many, many times, many, many times with the Pope and working on deals with them constantly. It's, it's, it's unbelievable. And, and he's affiliated with the Temple Institute, who, who the founder of that is Rabbi Yisrael Ariel, is the founder of this. And, but as I've said to you, many of you, another, some of you that believe that the Temple will actually, the Dome of the Rock will be torn down, they're going to build the Temple where the Dome of the Rock is. I'm not against that being a possibility. That could be a possibility. I'm not going to discount that as a possibility. But from what it looks like, it, it, it seems to be that they're going to come to an agreement and allow the temple to be built along the side of the Dome of Rock. Now, this was the deal that Shimon Perez made back in 1993 trying to get past, but at that time, Yasser Arafat would not go along with it. But, ironically, just to show you that, yes, Israel has actually been willing to give up East Jerusalem, and this is, there again, the political leaders, the religious leaders, are all tangled up into this nonsense. And I, I wish I had the articles printed out where, uh, especially where Rabbi uh, uh, Yonah Metzger meets with the, with, the, with the Pope and the things that are said there. It's just unbelievable what our leaders are getting into. God have mercy on our people. Now this here is dated on December 1st, 2012. Uh, it's in the, uh, it's in, uh, under uh, News That Matters. It says, ready to walk into the final trap of a special regime in Jerusalem. December 1st, 2012, Eidhu Barak and Muhammad Abbas has agreed to let the old city of Jerusalem be taken over by a special regime. Hmm, sound like the Vatican, sound like a perfect regime to take it over there. Ah, okay. The Israeli leadership seems to walk right into the final trap, the stage for the final anti-Messiah 
is about to be set up in Jerusalem. The Israeli Defense Minister Ehud Barak offered the Palestinian or the PA government, they got it abbreviated, East Jerusalem already in 1997. Before he left for peace talk in Jerusalem, Barak held a secret talk with the chairman uh, Mahmoud Abbas to the Israeli Daily Haaretz. Barak disclosed that the government of Israel is willing to divide Jerusalem. As for the Jerusalem problem, the western side of the city plus 12 Jewish neighborhoods that are home to 200,000 residents will be ours. The neighborhoods in which nearly 250,000 Arabs are living will be theirs, explained Barak. In regards to the old city, Barak envisions a special regime with an agreed-upon arrangement to administer the old city, the Mount of Olives, and the city of David. The concept is similar to the one raised up in the past by the administration of former U.S. President Bill Clinton, who recommended the area, which he referred to as the Holy Basin, be uh, internationalized under a special regime. Now, is that the United Nations will be the special regime? Is it going to be the Vatican that will be the special regime? The question is, I don't know the answers to all the intricate points in this matter here, but the serious point is, is that our people are agreeing. The leaders and the religious, both the Levites and we're finding with our political leaders, are making this marriage. And if it ripped Ezra's heart apart to see our people make those marriages like this and come before Hashem, before Almighty God, when they're getting ready to build, you know, look at the timing, my brothers. When Ezra was getting ready to, to restore the second temple, and when they get ready to go to build the second temple, we have a covenant that is made, a marriage that is made with all these Arab nations and with these Gentiles. And here we are again on the verge of building the third temple and our people have bound themselves into covenants and agreements with all of these Arab nations and with the Vatican, the Gentile nation as well. But Daniel saw it. And it's a repeat of history. And yes, my heart is torn with inside of myself to know that our religious leaders who should be the ones that should be the light for Israel are willing to, to go. It's like Rabbi Mitzrachi out of New York, my, my brother. You, you, say you, you said you've talked with the Pope and you put him as a Christian. Hey, there are no more Christian. Their own Bible condemns them. And, and another thing, you take... And, and, and the Christian Bible, it's, that Bible, I've got one right here, it's written by Jewish writers. This is not written by, by Gentiles. And did not John, he spoke of this woman that sits on seven hills. The only place geographically sits on seven hills is Rome. The Vatican City sits on those seven hills. And he called her a great whore. And then he talks about how that there are beasts that rises up out of the earth that gives all of its power unto the first. Talking about the, the, the Vatican controlling the United Nations. Yeah, they're going to work hand in hand together. And we're sitting there, our people are making covenants with them. But you will wake up. That's the blessed one thing I can see. You will wake up. John speaks about it when he writes in Revelations 11. And go, go read Revelation 11. Get you a Christian Bible and go read it. He said that they would, I'll read it for you, bless God. I'll tell you what, you need to know it. Even though you may not believe it, you still need to know it. Because he says right here in Revelation chapter 11, a Jewish man, I know we didn't want to believe him. You know, I'll tell you what, our forefathers didn't believe Elijah either. They didn't believe Elisha. You didn't believe Eliyahu. Ain't Mavin. Eliyahu, ve Moshe, ve Elisha. You know that. So what makes any difference that you would believe John? But here's what John said. Then I was given a reed like a measuring rod, and the angel stood saying, Rise and measure the temple of God and the altar, and those who worship therein. They're going to build a third temple. Measure it. But watch what he says here. But leave out the court which is outside the temple, and do not measure it, for it has been given to the Gentiles, and they will tread the holy city underfoot forty and two months. That's three and a half years. Did not Daniel speak of that 70th week? And did not he say in the midst of that week that the sacrifice and oblation will be cut off? Why is it going to be cut off? Because Daniel said he'll break his covenant halfway through that week. 
And even John sees here, they'll walk that city for three and a half years. But what happens? My brethren, then you'll wake up. Then you'll realize that you did wrong by signing these agreements. And that's why the covenant will be broken. That's, that's, when, that's when Mashiach bin David will come on the scene and do something about it. We need to, I'm telling you now, I'll warn you in advance before it happens, so that when it does happen, you will know that what you did was wrong. And God have mercy on our people and have mercy on what will happen to our nation during this time and the evils that will transpire. Yes, they will say peace and safety, but there is no peace. And that is a New Testament quote, as they call it. Search the scripture. Search what Zechariah says. Yes, we're going to have a Gog and Magog. Moshe Ba'aliyahu Haba. And they will forerun HaMashiach. And this will be when we start to get our eyes open at where we made our mistake. Is when God sends Moses and Elijah to tell us what we did wrong. Witnesses, as John calls them. Witnesses of what? Of who Moshiach Ben David really is. Ani me'amin koha deva, koha deva, hatanach ve Torah. Bo Hashem. Amen.